My guest today is Don Packett, Chief Information Officer of the G Aerospace Companies of G Additive, Doughty, and Unison Industries, and is responsible for the technology systems and environments worldwide, ensuring the fleet remains commercial and mission ready. Don oversees free PNL units, driving strategy for 3D additive, printers, propeller systems for turboprop commercial and military aircraft and global supply of gas turbine components and electrical mechanical systems. Don holds a bachelor's degree in management information systems from Miami University and a master's degree in strategic and organizational leadership. She molded a leadership approach using her journey as a guide to steer away from approaches she found unappealing. Without further ado, let's listen to the valuable insights as Dawn navigated a journey as an executive. Hi, Dawn. A very warm welcome to Atlanta Diaries. Hello, Enma. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to tell my story and inspire others. Awesome. Love to begin with understanding your early childhood. Share with us in what ways you think it played a role in shaping the person you've become. Yeah. So when I sit and reflect on my early years, I recognize how my upbringing in a lower middle class environment that was really marked by family struggles, including challenges of alcoholism. I think it profoundly influenced my development and aspirations. These experiences, far from being mere obstacles, they served as a critical lesson that steered me toward the path I'm on today. And, you know, Growing up, the concept of normal, right, was elusive, leading me to uh, navigate a world where stability was a luxury. I recall vividly the days of waiting in line for basic necessities like cheese and bread and the frequent moves to different school districts as my parents sought better opportunities for us. Um, You know, one particularly striking memory is seeing the stark contrast between my family's modest grocery cart uh, and that of a classmate's family that was overflowing with goods. The difference in how we paid, we relied upon food stamps. And um, that became a source of embarrassment and a stark indicator of financial disparities, especially when it became fodder for uh, grade school gossip. These experiences uh, fueled a determination in me to break the cycle of the financial and emotional instability that had characterized my upbringing. This resolve wasn't born out of a disdain for my past, right? But rather for a desire for a different future for myself and my children. My educational journey, bolstered by mentorship and support that I received, played a critical part and a crucial role in overcoming the barriers of poverty and becoming the first in my family to graduate from college. And that's a milestone that symbolized hope and the possibility of change for me. Wow, that sounds like a lot of challenges, Dawn. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that I would say in my... Throughout my life, including my executive roles, an example of what I and many others face could be, you know, some folks refer to as the mean girl syndrome, a pattern of bullying and or manipulation, right? So these encounters, while they're challenging, have been invaluable for me in teaching and learning resilience and helping me define the person I am to be and the values that I strive to uphold. I remember you mentioned last time that your mom gifted you a t-shirt at your graduation party. So take us through moments on how you really navigated your journey to college. (laughs) Yeah, you know, uh, and there was a running joke in my family that I was adopted, Uh, not because of any lack of connection, but due to the stark differences between me and the rest of my family. Uh, This humorous idea, rather than making me feel isolated, highlighted uh, my unique path and the character from a very young age. I believe that every child embarks on their own journey shaped by a mix of internal and external factors uh, that are carved out of our distinct personalities, right, and our futures. And um, a particularly memorable moment that encapsulates my journey towards self-discovery and ambition occurred during my high school graduation, as you mentioned, right? In the midst of a large gathering of friends and family, my mother gifted me a t-shirt inscribed with the words, I'm going to be successful. This gift, far from being a mere statement, symbolized a profound commitment basically to me achieving success, right? And being fulfilled and the capacity to care for my loved ones. It affirmed my aspirations and the expansive definition of uh, success, not limited to financial prosperity, but certainly that is a key part of my you know, upbringing, but it also enriched with experiences, knowledge, and opportunities such as going to college. 
share with me a little bit about your mentorship journey. You know, I know mentors played a huge role in your life. So love to learn a little bit more about your mentorship journey. You know, as I sit here and, and we're talking and I'm reflecting, you know, in my early years, I can't overstate the critical role that mentorships and mentors played in shaping both my career and my personal development, right? My journey with my high school mentor, Mary Jo, who seamlessly became a friend and akin to a second mother, was particularly transformative, right? Our connection blossomed not merely from shared experiences, but from a mutual commitment to learning and growth. And this bond became a cornerstone of support, uh, guiding me through significant life transitions, including my efforts to break free from the cycle of poverty all the way through you know, education. I would say as my career progressed, I naturally gravitated toward mentors who shared that compassion and then the wisdom and the resilience of my early mentor, Mary Jo. So as I soon realized the importance of diversifying, right, my circle of mentors to encompass a wide range of professional paths and personal philosophies and experiences, that insight and really led me to seek mentorship from both men and women from a multitude of industries, styles, and certainly different perspectives. You know, if I reflect a little bit more on that, the journey of the corporate ladder brought me to light a, a concerning trend, the notable scarcity of female mentors in senior positions, often leading to a competitive rather than supportive environment, right? So, you know, as you go up and up the corporate ladder, you kind of get into that pyramid where there's fewer and fewer roles um, across. And that observation contradicted and brought into question my fundamental belief in uplifting and supporting others, prompting me to take an active role in um, mentoring initiatives and women's network groups within the tech sector where female representation was particularly low. You know, when I shifted from accounting to technology as a career option, you know, in college, it further highlighted those gender disparities within the field. And it strengthened my resolve to support and elevate women in their personal endeavors. My commitment extends beyond addressing the gap that existed, right? It was more about creating a culture where mentorship serves as a catalyst for empowerment as a collective. And um, it transcends gender biases and really fostering talent kind of across the board. I think my experiences with mentorship profoundly influenced my journey, right? It shaped my belief in a mentorship's ability to change lives, really break down those barriers, and overall forge a more inclusive and equitable professional environment. The commitment that I have, especially towards women in technology and leadership, is a fundamental part of my mission and part of what gets me motivated each day which was inspired really by the guidance, support, and wisdom generously shared with me from my mentors. So Don, what is the turning point when you move from accounting to MIS? Like there's purpose and intention in every step you've taken. There is. So a lot of it was what was happening in the industry, right? And what was happening within businesses and, and getting into, you know, the tax accounting courses. In my junior and senior year of college, I was like, I don't think I want to do this. Mm. But they're not fun classes. It didn't inspire me. And then I think also it became kind of a, a feeling of, okay, money isn't everything, right? Yeah. And so, okay, accounting is very steady, you know, and computer science courses were kind of really more and more my passion wide. So I decided that um, I was going to switch majors, which was extremely daunting for me, right? Because I was like, oh my gosh, I can't afford another year of college. So like, how am I going to pull this off? And so I just did massive workloads to make it happen and worked with my advisors and my counselors to ensure that I could do that. And where companies were hiring, it was leaning more towards, you know, computers. Maybe that's something that I really do need to look at because it's a growing and an emerging field and the jobs were going to be more plentiful. And I just took extra classes and summer classes to make that happen. And I couldn't be more thrilled with the decision, but speaking to young females or males that are in their college days, trying to decide, do I switch my major? Do I not? It's okay to. And who really knows at 18, 19, 20, what you want to do for the rest of your life, right? And it's okay to switch. Um, I would extend this piece of advice. It's completely valid to reassess and adjust your goals. And the doubts and uncertainties 
about the future that you face, you know, at what, when you're in college at 18 or 20, right? They're part and they're a parcel of life's journey. So life is a continuous unfolding of interests, passions, opportunities, and making the decision to switch majors despite its challenges. And I would encourage folks to embrace the journey of discovery and uh, remain open to the possibilities that it presents because I'm kind of living proof of that. You also change from healthcare to manufacturing, which is no mean feat again, right? So help us understand how did you take those difficult decisions? Yeah, you know, very much like the conversation we just had around, uh, you know, my major change, right, in college, I found myself drawn by the promise of stability and career progression when I considered changing industries, very much like I did when I was in college, right? So my attraction to a renowned healthcare company that was celebrated for its forward-thinking stance on gender diversity, um, that really marked the beginning of a profound chapter in my career. Then the shift into healthcare highlighted my leadership potential, a trait a supervisor identified early on that I didn't even see in myself. But the serendipitous opportunity to lead that was transformative, and it propelled me into management and leadership. And, um, you know, my ambition, also coupled with a desire for financial stability, right, guided me through uh, two decades of significant organizational changes, including mergers and acquisitions and the challenging workforce reductions that often follow such transitions. That role as a leader, especially during periods of profound change, like the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, right? So the culmination of my career in healthcare came unexpectedly when I was affected by a reduction in force. And not going to lie, it was hard. But I seized the opportunity that that rift presented to reflect on my professional path. And so despite the uncertainty and the financial instability, um, I was convinced that the versatility of my leadership skills and their applicability was really across various industries. So why not look at something other than healthcare, which kind of led me into, you know, what's kind of the opposite of that? Let's look at manufacturing. Um, So as I was contemplating all of that, that period in time, you know, led my husband and I to make a bold decision. Let's take a year off. Let's take advantage of that reduction in force and not take a different role within the healthcare industry that I was very comfortable with. But use that time to really cherish the moments with my family and um, deliberate on what the next chapter was going to be. So um, it allowed me to consider my next career move from a place of calmness and reflection. And my overall need for a new direction steered me towards the aerospace sector, right? Um, Which was an industry that was starkly different from healthcare. So when I look at, you know, moving uh, careers and saying, okay, this really just isn't fun anymore. I'm not as passionate about it as I used to be. How do I come up with new opportunities? And that's really what led me into the the manufacturing world. And I navigated through tons of interviews and um, often faced a lot of rejection, right? During my search, it reminded me of values from my mom, resilience, the courage to venture beyond um, my comfort zone, the importance of perseverance. So Ultimately, my resolve led me to a significant opportunity within the aerospace industry, a sector that I really had never previously considered. But that year off and really thinking through what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be and where I could make my mark um, was really something that um, I embraced. And um, the the possibility of the transition was uh, met with (laughs) a combination of excitement. But if I'm being quite honest, I'm a tad bit of doubt. So um, one thing that I do as a mentor, Enma, is I share this part of my journey. It had career setbacks, right? And things such as a riff, it can open doors to growth and new opportunities and new beginnings that you really didn't see as part of that, that turmoil, you know, that was going on. So I think my story is a testament to the idea that our value and our potential, it's not limited by external factors such as a riff, Right or one's age or gender, but it's also reaffirmed by, you know, faith and resilience, the adaptability, the transformative power of embracing those new opportunities, and uh, the chance to work in the aerospace industry really offered me that opportunity of a lifetime. So the shift from healthcare 
to manufacturing, it's been a humbling experience, but it's also been an empowering experience. Um, It's marking a new phase in my life where I'm able to bring my authentic self to work, face new challenges head on, and really contribute to a field that once seemed way, way out of reach. Wow, a lot of courageous decisions and a lot of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, (laughs) Dawn. For sure. So if you had to reflect on your journey over the years, did you ever experience gender bias? So I would say if I reflect on my time in the healthcare sector, right? So my journey, it was a, a rich tapestry of both opportunities and challenges, certainly, as you noted, influenced by the gender dynamics within the technology domain. Right. So while women were prevalent in the operational and business roles, the representation in technology was markedly lower. Right. Um, But through networking and mentoring, I navigated the realms and I gained invaluable insight and experiences that shaped my career. Right. So a particularly defining moment in my career provided (laughs) what I'll refer to as a deep learning opportunity. Um, about the the essence of recognition and the impact of leadership decisions. So it became very apparent during my tenure in the healthcare space that female representation in the technology leadership team was significantly less than anticipated, right? So there were these leadership offsites that were held and they traditionally culminated in an award ceremony, right? Celebrating organizational achievements, And they became a focal point for my expectations around recognizing my entire year of notable contributions. And um, that year, um, and in particular, when I think back to this this moment in, in my career journey, the ceremonies awards shifted from monetary awards to gadgets to artwork uh, by renowned, you know, photographers. And each description seemingly echoed my accomplishments when someone was recognized for the reward and the award would be, you know, stated what it was and um, what the accomplishments were. And every single one of those echoed what I had achieved. But and as that event unfolded and the awards were distributed, my name was notably absent, right? Mm -hmm. And the shock and the disheartenment I felt upon realizing that my efforts would not be publicly recognized despite meeting the criteria, it was profound. That situation was um, exasperated by an interaction with a senior leader who in a well-meaning but ultimately dismissive gesture offered me a choice of remaining photographs as a form of acknowledgement. And that led to a subsequent conversation with my direct manager that further highlighted that discrepancy between perceived acknowledgement and the meaningful valuation of an employee's contributions, right? Especially as a female in that technology world that was really dominated more by men, right? And that incident in and of itself has really etched itself in my memory. So from this experience, I learned a vital lesson on leadership do's and don'ts, especially the importance of treating individuals with respect Um, and the acknowledgement that they deserve. That moment really significantly influenced my leadership approach. It underscores the importance of recognition and its enduring impact on individuals because I can still talk about it today and I I feel that fire right in the the pit of my belly. So it taught me the the crucial role that that we as leaders play in fostering um, an inclusive and respectful organizational culture and emphasizing that actions must align with the core values to truly inspire and lead effectively. That sounds like a very, very traumatic at some level situation, Dawn. And thank you for sharing that. Of course, you came out stronger and I guess it led you to greener pastures, right? So who was your go-to person at that point of time? I'm just wondering, how did you sort of deal with such a situation Who was your safe space? Because it is lonely on top. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, reflecting on that pivotal moment in my career, I immediately reached out to Mary Jo, you know, who was my high school mentor. And we talked about encountering such a significant professional challenge, right? And together we dissected that situation. And it led really to a valuable realization on my part 
that the issue at hand wasn't a reflection of my capabilities or actions or what I did or didn't do, but really it was rather the environment and the actions of others within it. So their perspective was not only enlightening, but also comforting because it, it provided a foundation for my response to the situation, right? The support and insight of my husband, you know, who also, you know, he navigates these uh, complexities of leaderships within the technology sector. They were indispensable. So between the conversations with my mentor, Mary Jo, and my conversations with my husband, while they weren't always centered on business strategies, right? But we frequently touched upon the nuances of leadership um, and its personal impacts. And those discussions were a source of strength and clarity for me, right? It helped me to navigate through the emotional aftermath of those events, because as you noted, they were profound, right? And it was hurtful. And what do you take away from that? So the dialogue also went outside of my immediate circle to include other women within my professional network. So sharing my experiences with them was not about seeking validation or for them to commiserate with me, but, but more about opening a channel for collective learning and support. But I would say, you know, overall, and those mentorship relationships and those conversations, along with the passage of time, it introduces the challenges and my perspective on the situation. And it's evolved from one of being immediately disappointed with the recognition or the lack of recognition, right, to an invaluable lesson that it imparted. So the experience, while it was challenging, it ignited a renewed determination within me, fueling my drive towards achieving my goals and furthering my career. So, you know, the act of sharing this experience with those mentors not only allowed for a personal cathartic moment, right, but it also enriched their understanding and the approach to mentorship. It provided them with concrete examples to draw upon when advising others on navigating similar challenges, right? And the reflections on this episode have really underscored the importance of vocalizing one's experience and concerns in the moment, right? A lesson that I too have learned, and I hope will continue to carry that forward in my professional journey. So it's through these um, shared experiences that we all grow and that we have the ability to adapt and become better versions of ourselves, both uh, professionally, but personally as well. Having said that, Dawn, you know, the, the fact that you pivoted to a completely different industry, what is that one thing because of which G felt that you were the right candidate? I'm sure there must have been questions all around a different industry, a different background, a different knowledge base, right? So what is it that told them that Dawn is the right candidate? So one of the things that I focused on throughout my career was not only the technology, but how do people organizations and companies leverage the technology, right? To propel them and their revenues and reduction of expense forward, right? And I spent a lot of my career journey focusing on that. And that helped me be a more well-rounded technologist. And I think that came through in my experience and my interviews with GE is not only do I have the technological background and the technical skills and experience to be able to lead technology organizations, but I also have the business aspect of that. And I share that with my mentees, right? It's important to understand all factions and all functions of a business, because if you focus on just the technology, you're not helping them understand how to use the technology to their benefit. And I think that's one of the big things that I brought to GE, right? So GE historically, you know, being a 150-year-old plus company, right, has historically been one to promote from within. And it was um, an interesting time where GE is really bringing in a lot of lean principles and lean methodologies. And one of the lean methodologies is fresh eyes right? Mm -hmm. And what perspective do you bring to the organization? And that played upon a strength that I have. So HR is HR, finance is finance, right? And all of those exist in all companies. And so those uh, skills are transferable from healthcare to manufacturing in this case, right? And I, I'm not going to lie, Emma, 
When I took on the CIO role and moved into a manufacturing, I was scared to death, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what level you're at, how long you've been in these executive roles, you still move into a different role and you have some trepidation, right? And you're really starting from, can I do this? It's new and it's daunting and it's scary. And I was very authentic in my interviews with GE that, yeah, this is going to be new. I know nothing about manufacturing, nothing. But what I do know is leadership and I know business functions and I know how to leverage the technology systems. And I think that is really what allowed me to break through that barrier and join GE from the outside. What kind of fear did you have when you took on the role? How did you navigate that fear? You know, I think it's a lot of soul searching and looking back at your experience and where you've come from to where you are, right? It's kind of like being a parent, right? Your children are who they are and they act better for people outside of your family. That's the child you raised because they're going to raise holy terror with you, right? So your kids are how they are to the external facing. It's the same as in your organization. When you are mentoring and you're helping and you're managing and you're leading people within your organization, the true testament of being a great leader is that they leave your organization and they get promoted, right? That means you're doing your job properly, right? So true. And so I think you just have to take a deep breath and look back at what you've accomplished because that's the truth of what happened. It's what have you done and where have you been and really taking stock. And then you're like, oh yeah, I can do this. I don't even know why I doubted myself. Can you think of any mistakes you made in the past from your perspective? Oh, Emma, I have made so (laughs) many mistakes, right? And I think that's what makes us human. And I've made some doozies. I've made mistakes as, you know, late as last week. Well, actually, just from a couple of weeks ago. So having a a mentoring conversation with someone and I didn't recognize the depth that this personal experience had on this person. And when they were asking me a question about it, I didn't take it to heart as much as I should have, right? So that was where I let my emotional intelligence not really rise to the surface because I answered the question in a way that caught them off guard because it wasn't the perspective they were coming from. And I meant no disrespect. Um, I didn't internalize the question as much as they had internalized the problem and how it should be handled. And I walked away from that conversation feeling really badly. And so I went back to them and I resolved the feeling that I had walking away from that. And then when I saw their demeanor and the slumping of the shoulders and the body language, when they walked away, it hit me, I did something wrong and I want to go fix that. But I didn't know the landmine that I was stepping on because I didn't take the time to ask follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. I took the question they were asking me for advice and how to handle something at face value. Mm -hmm. And I know better, Enma, right? I know better with my 20 plus years of leadership experience to ask those questions and to dig a little deeper. And um, I took away from that, that even if I'm going to be late for my next meeting, that person is more important than the next meeting I have. And if I have to explain why I'm late, I need to be able to do that and take the time for the individuals that need it. Yeah, that is so true. Looking back on your journey thus far, what advice would you give to your younger self? Do everything that you can do to achieve that dream because it doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your race, your ethnicity, your gender, your experiences. It's all around the motivation and the fire that you light within yourself. And anybody can achieve anything regardless of where they started. I'm a true testament to that if you just listen to my journey, right? But I didn't always feel that way. And so I wish I could go back and tell my younger self, it's going to be okay. And I wish, you know, when I had that period of not working and deciding to take off for a year and really making that leap of faith, right? I wish I could even go back and tell myself, you know, two and a half years ago, right? It'll be okay. 
the universe has big things in store for everyone. And if you embrace it and you have faith in that journey in God and in yourself to be able to, you know, master what you want to accomplish and what you can, you have everything before you. And it's only what you choose uh, to do and what door you choose to open. And you never know what's going to be behind that door. And it's probably terrifying, but walk through it. It's okay. You'll be able to use everything that you've experienced and your education and what you've learned and the people that have inspired you and helped you to get to where you are. Use all of that to help you open that door and take the step through it. You won't regret it. Thank you, Dawn. This has been so amazing. And I really appreciate all that you've shared in this conversation. Thank you, and I appreciate it. Thank you for being a part of this incredible journey with Atlanta Diaries. I have had the privilege of hosting guests who courageously shared their most vulnerable selves with me. And even if only a small segment of these conversations can champion the journey of one person, it will be worth each and every moment. And together, we know we can create an even greater impact. So I do have a humble request for you. If you found value in these episodes, please consider sharing the podcast with your friends, family, and on your social media. I would also love to hear your thoughts and will really appreciate if you could take a moment to leave a review or rating. See you next week for another inspiring journey on Atlanta Diaries.